begin tonight with breaking news on one of Australia's most baffling cases. The disappearance of three-year-old William Tyrrell almost a decade ago. Nine News can reveal detectives now believe there's enough evidence to charge the toddler's foster mother over his disappearance. Hello, I'm Paul Barry. Welcome to Media Watch and to renewed media frenzy in the case that's baffled and embarrassed New South Wales police for almost a decade. Whatever happened to William Tyrrell, the little boy in the Spider-Man suit? Last week, we got no closer to knowing, despite this scoop from Nine's court reporter, Tiffany Genders. Peter can confirm police have handed the Director of Public Prosecutions a brief this month. It contains evidence against William Tyrrell's foster mother, who we can't name, recommending she be charged with perverting the course of justice and interfering with a corpse. The allegation being there was a deadly accident at a home in Kendall before the toddler's body was removed and disposed of. The timing of this obvious leak to the media is no coincidence. Last week marked what would have been William Tyrrell's 12th birthday. But it was news to the foster mother, who denies any involvement in William's disappearance, with her lawyer saying she knew nothing of any potential charges, and who woke next day to read all about it in the telly. Tyrrell bombshell. Cops move on foster mum. And the day after that to another front page with this damaging headline. William was dumped in the bush. The Daily Telegraph can reveal detectives claim the mother was seen driving on a bush road close to the riding school in Kendall. Police also claim there are gaps in the timeline of the foster mother's movements that day. Given that William's body has not been found, despite a massive police search, and there appears to be little or no forensic evidence, it's hard to see how police could mount a case of interfering with a corpse, let alone get a conviction. And at this point, no charges have been laid. But that didn't stop the telly, branding the police action a major breakthrough and Sunrise sending a reporter to the tiny town of Kendall for a live cross in the dark. Live to Liam Tapper at Kendall. Liam, this is a significant development. Good morning, Chevo. It certainly is. Surely a significant development would be someone being arrested and charged, which New South Wales police have the power to do, instead of asking the DPP to make a decision. But in reporting the Tyrrell case, the media have often let sensation trump common sense. Although this time, Seven's Matt Doran at least counselled some caution. If history has taught us anything when it comes to the William Tyrrell case, it is that if we're going to adopt any optimism, it really needs to be cautious optimism because we have seen time and time again that what are these rumoured breakthroughs or the developments in the case, they ultimately have fallen flat. It's certainly not news that William's foster mother is the only person of interest. That was revealed in November 2021, and it was then confirmed in court a year later when she was cleared of lying to the secretive New South Wales Crime Commission and the police strategy was exposed, as Seven News reported at the time. Today, an insight into how detectives hoped she would crack. You were hoping to break her spirit. Is that why you brought these charges? One homicide officer was asked. I formed the view that she knows where William Tyrrell is. The court also heard how detectives had been to the foster mother's house seeking a confession. Today is the day you make a decision for William, police told her. We aren't bluffing, we know why, we know how, we know where. Why haven't you got him, she responded. Last week, the foster mother, who cannot be identified for legal reasons, was reasserting her innocence over William's disappearance and calling for the disclosure of the police evidence against her. And in The Australian, Caroline Overington, who has written a book on the case, told readers who had been leaking to the media. Detectives have been telling reporters off the record that he may have fallen from a second-storey balcony at the Kendall property. And they say his foster mum might have hidden his body. In November 2021, when New South Wales Police began a painstaking search of bush near the Kendall property for William's remains, they also used the media to put the foster mother in the frame, driving stories like this double page spread in the telly. A cute pic or just a barefoot lie? Which revealed supposedly crucial evidence that allegedly showed the foster mother had lied to the police. She said he was wearing shoes because of the bindies in the lawn or in case he stepped in dog droppings. It is now believed that there were no bindies at the property and the family dog was dead. As we said at the time, the police would need a lot more evidence than that to bring charges. But the media were told the search would uncover it. With TV cameras looking on, the hunt dragged on for weeks, with police even draining the nearby creek. And reporters primed to expect a breakthrough, giving daily updates on each new discovery. What was the focus for detectives today? 
Georgie, it was a glimpse of red that caught everyone's attention here on site this afternoon. And who can forget the discovery of a replica gun? It was found in rugged bushland less than a kilometre from where William went missing. It's among 31 items bagged and sent away for further examination so far. However, officers don't believe it is linked to the case. 19 months on, it seems all to have come to nothing. And the latest move appears to be anything but a breakthrough. As one crime reporter told us last week... If the police had enough evidence, they would have arrested the foster mother. They've palmed it off to the DPP so that when the DPP rejects it, they can say, well, we did everything we could. So, what happens next? The media stakeout of the foster parents' residence will continue as we wait for the DPP to make a decision. Or, as the ABC reported... Prosecutors will now decide if the police case against the foster mother has any merit. If no charges are laid, the case will be referred back to the coroner. How long that takes is unclear, but the foster mother wants it resolved quickly calling on the DPP to expeditiously determine whether charges are to be laid. As Seven's Matt Doran said last week... This whole case, if you look at it over the nine years, there have been a series of missteps, a series of people that have been cornered and then released. Mm. So police will be desperate to get it right this time. And looking at the way the media have covered this case, you would hope the media would be desperate to get it right too and stop pushing the narrative of so-called bombshell developments. New South Wales Police say they are now conducting an internal investigation into who leaked the DPP story. Given the history of this case, don't be surprised if you read about the outcome of that in the papers. But now, to more crime and more bad reporting, with a 7 News exclusive bringing fear and loathing to the streets of Sydney. A man who killed his baby son claims he poses no threat to the community after being released on parole. He's now living in Sydney's southwest and says he just, he's just trying to move on with his life. But some residents are terrified. So, who is this killer sparking terror in the suburbs? Seven braved the danger and cornered him coming home from work. A convicted baby killer back on the streets. What did you do to why, your son? Why? What the hell is this? Martin Saunders, seen publicly for the first time since admitting he shook his 10-week-old son to death. Back in 2019, Martin Saunders confessed to shaking his 10-week-old son and causing catastrophic brain injuries. He pleaded guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to a minimum of three years in jail. And Seven's reporter Evan Batten was making the most of his supposed first sighting since release by stalking Saunders with a microphone and camera. This is horrible. Well, what happened to your son's pretty bad too. I, know, I understand that. It was the media playing judge and jury and encouraging the lynch mob aided by the baby's mother, the main talent in Seven's exclusive story, who called her former partner... A monster. He's worse than, like, you know, like... Oh. I don't know what to say. It. <laughs> He's... There's no words for him. Rochelle Kennedy has spoken to Seven News twice about the death of her son in 2019 and 2021. But Seven's reason for speaking to her a third time was that Saunders is now on parole and living in the community, with Batten asking... The key among the unanswered questions for Rochelle is why was a baby killer allowed to live here in the heart of Liverpool, just a stone's throw from Westfield and nestled in amongst any number of daycare centres and schools? Yes, a baby killer living near a Westfield shopping centre, schools and daycare centres, which means... Some residents are terrified. How many residents? Seven did not say. Nor did it say how long Saunders has been living in the community, so far without incident. And how long is that? The State Parole Authority told MediaWatch a... ..panel of five members determined releasing Saunders on parole was in the interests of the safety of the community and ordered he be released 15th of December 2022. Yes, more than six months ago. Surely that's relevant to Seven's story. As is the fact that Saunders has so far been complying with his parole conditions, which include that he not be in the company of a person under the age of 16 years unless accompanied by a responsible adult. So, how much of a risk to the public is this man? New South Wales Corrective Services told MediaWatch they informed Seven's reporter... ..that this offender was not considered to be dangerous to the public. And they added... However, this was not reflected in the story. It certainly was not. Nor was it reflected in the Vox Pops from locals. I had two kids, but... Uh... It's unbelievable. Shouldn't be living in our apartment blocks. Shouldn't be living on the streets, to be honest with you. Well, yes, if he was a danger to the public, we'd have to agree. 
but the parole authority and corrective services don't think he is. Meanwhile, if Saunders is trying to get his life back on track, Seven's fear-mongering and prime-time harassment will make it that much harder. And if you think you might have avoided Seven's harangue by showing some remorse, well, think again. Here is what Saunders had to say when he was sentenced in 2021, as reported by Guess Who? Yes, Channel 7. I feel horrible, disgusted, haunted, he told the court. I have done this. I am responsible. This is all because of me. I apologise. I can't ever take it back. To the police, paramedics and doctors, and to everyone who had to deal with this because of my actions. All in all, the latest report was a disgraceful piece of yellow journalism. So, what did Seven have to say? Get a load of this. Our reporting does not suggest that Martin Saunders is currently a danger to the public, but rather covers the concerns primarily from those living in the community as well as the mother of the child. Seriously? Concerns that are fanned by Seven, which failed to mention his remorse, or that the Parole Authority and Corrective Services don't think he's a danger to the public. Honestly, what a disgrace. And Corrective Services tell us they will complain to the media watchdog, the ACMA. But now, to lofty matters and a Sky News exclusive with a member of the famous Kennedy clan. The CIA was not only involved in my uncle's murder, but they were also managed the cover-up. In a must-see interview, Robert Kennedy Jr. sits down with Sky News and exposes stunning new details about the assassination of his uncle, President John F. Kennedy. What actually happened? Well, JFK got shot, I can tell you that much. And it was 60 years ago. But conspiracy theories still abound about who was to blame. So Sky's interview with Bobby Kennedy's son could have been a fascinating ride. After all, RFK Jr, who's pitching to be president, is an anti-vaxxer who believes that mobile phones and Wi-Fi cause cancer. But instead of challenging him on his wacky views, Sky's Adam Walters was puffing him up with questions like this. Recently, the founder of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, went public and tweeted that Robert Kennedy was going to beat Biden, he was going to beat Trump, and he was going to beat DeSantis. That's quite an endorsement. Are you such a long shot after all? The answer to that is undoubtedly yes, because recent YouGov polls give Kennedy only 8 to 12 per cent of the vote in a race with Joe Biden for the 2024 Democratic nomination. And much of his support is coming from Republicans. RFK Jr, you see, is famous for his claim that vaccines are unsafe and cause autism, which is why on US TV, viewers are almost always warned about where he's coming from. Perhaps best known for his controversial views on vaccines. Today, he's also known as a vaccine skeptic, a leader in the anti-vax movement. RFK Jr is one of the biggest voices pushing anti-vaccine rhetoric. Bobby, thanks so much for coming on. Um, so you are, of course, being dismissed as a vaccine nut. But Sky's two-part, two-day exclusive special glossed over all that and gave him a much grander introduction. US presidential election dark horse Robert Kennedy Jr. has told Sky News that internal polling shows he would be the strongest candidate of any party to take on Donald Trump. Well, he would say that, wouldn't he? But he'd need to beat Biden first, and he appears to have no chance of doing that. Part one of the interview ran for seven minutes and celebrated RFK's so-called Camelot comeback and his strong early polling. And the only mention of RFK's anti-vaccine views was a sideswipe at his critics. His growing profile has rattled his enemies. They've long tried to portray RFK Jr. as a crank for challenging authorities during the pandemic over vaccines and freedom of speech. The personal attacks on me, which you know are, are uh, pretty ubiquitous, I don't, you know, I'm, uh, I'm okay with that. So, no questions about whether there's any evidence for his anti-vaxxer claims, or his suggestion that chemical exposure is turning kids transgender? Strangely not, nor was there any pushback in part two of the interview, which was entirely dedicated to RFK's theory the CIA was behind the shooting death of his uncle John, and probably his father too. My father, the evidence that his murder was the result of the CIA um, is, uh, is very, very strong, but it is circumstantial. Um, you know, I, I don't, I personally, um, I'm quite certain of it, but it's not the kind of, you know, clear um, and, you know, undisputable evidence as in my uncle's case. 
In about 15 minutes of exclusive content, Sky found no time to challenge RFK on anything of note. And strangely enough, nor did the Sunday News Corp tabloids in Brisbane, Adelaide and Sydney in May when they featured this upbeat double-page spread on RFK. If ever the world needed a Kennedy. Which also featured no references to his vaccine scepticism or false claim that Wi-Fi radiation causes cancer. So, for Sky and anyone else who wants to know how his crazier claims should have been handled, here's ABC America's Lindsay Davis showing the way. You've said in the past that there is a, a correlation between uh, vaccines leading to autism that's totally been debunked. Wait a minute, who debunked it? We oh. have not seen any kind of scientific connection from the CDC, the World Health Organization, the but National those Academy of Sciences. are captive agencies, Lindsay. And so you think they're all in cahoots? Yeah, they're all captive. And in case challenging RFK's claims in the interview wasn't enough, Davis finished up with a fact check. During our conversation, Kennedy made false claims about the COVID-19 vaccines. Data shows that the COVID-19 vaccines prevented millions of hospitalizations and deaths from the disease. He also made misleading claims about the relationship between vaccination and autism. Research shows that vaccines and the ingredients used for the vaccines do not cause autism, including multiple studies involving more than a million children. Sky News viewers and Adam Walters, please take note. We asked Walters for comment. He did not get back to us. That's all from us for tonight. You can read a statement from Channel 7 on our website. And don't forget Media Bytes on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram. But for now until next week, goodbye.